Okay, we'll go ahead and get started then. Good morning, and welcome to November's Leadership Series. Um, our, the lunch and learn today uh, is with uh, Brigadier General um, Richard Green. Um, we're very excited to have him here, and I'm sure he doesn't have the time for me to outline all the incredible things he's done in his 35-year career um, as an Air Force officer, but um, I would be remiss if I didn't point out a few specifically. Uh, he served as our wing commander from 11 March 2000 to 13 December 2003. He's a command pilot with more than 7,200 hours flying the T-38, the F-5 Alpha, Bravo, and Echo, the CT-39, and then the C-130 Alpha, Bravo, and H-2. He served as the president of the Ohio National Guard Association in a wide variety of leadership forums, including the chairman of the Air National Guard C-130's Weapon System Council, a member of the Air National Guard Air Director Field Advisor Council, Council, Air Mobility Command Policy Council, and the legislative director for the National Guard Association. So that's across Army and Air. It's an incredible number of people across our nation. Um, and even today, he serves as an avid supporter for our wing, and we're inc incredibly grateful to have you here today and to hear um, his sage advice and his definition of what leadership is for us. So without further ado, sir, thank you so much for being here, and the floor is yours. I'll bet everybody can hear me with this, can't you? All right. Um, it, it's really a great pleasure to be here today. Uh, this wing has always been an unbelievably outstanding wing uh, for a lot of different reasons and, uh, and the topic of leadership I think is, is, is critical. Uh, I think most of you have probably throughout your short careers have uh, served under good leaders and bad leaders. And, uh, you know, you, and you can probably tell very quickly that it's much better to work under good leadership than poor leadership. So I'm going to have a pretty short uh, presentation today. Uh, what I call leadership fundamentals. We'll go through that, and what I really want to do is get a dialogue going after we're done, uh, you know, after I'm done, and, and uh, you get your inputs, questions, and, and thoughts, and so forth. So, next slide. Okay, leadership and management are uh, not rocket science. They're basically a lot of common sense. I mean, I, mean, I don't know if I think, you know, most of you probably read uh, books on leadership and on uh, management, and, and it, to me it always boiled down to uh, basically good common sense and, and judgment. So it's not it's a, a good way to go. Um, but like doing anything in life, I don't care what it is, mastering the fundamentals will make whatever you do even that much better. Next slide. Okay, my definition of leadership, uh, for years and years when I would look up leadership, about the best you could get is in the power to influence people. And that kind of left me a little, you know, uh, kind of shallow on, on the topic. So I developed my own leadership uh, definition, which is leadership is the art of energizing followers to achieve a shared vision of a better future for the organization and themselves. It's an art because you have to put all kinds of different uh, competencies together or inter interpersonal communications and so forth. Um, it's energizing followers. I mean, if you can't energize followers or inspire them uh, to, to get really involved in what they're doing, you're, you're not really doing uh, leadership uh, very well. And it's for a better future. And that's where the vision and goals come in. And if the leader uh, is able to uh, articulate a vision that works for the unit and the people, it's all the better. And it, obviously is for a better uh, future uh, for both the organization and those involved. Next slide. Okay, the first fundamental is do your best every day. I mean, you have to do your best every day. You need to set an example. You need to be a pro. You need to be an expert at what you do. You need to follow the book, policies, procedures. In other words, you have to just really be into what you're doing uh, very thoroughly. Uh, one of the things I used to say, and, and uh, Colonel Kramer reminded of me, uh, of, of me uh, not long ago, is I used to always say the interview is every day. What you do every day will dictate, you know, 
how far along you move in the leadership uh, roles. Next slide. You have to establish uh, personal goals and vision. Now, the personal goals are for you as an individual. And essentially, the personal goals are, you know, you want to get your PME done, you want to get any training necessary, you want to, you know, make sure that you accomplish what you should be doing in your particular function. And, uh, you know, maybe gaining uh, new heights or, or levels of accomplishment in it. But you have to keep your eye on the ball. In other words, you got to really uh, focus on what you're supposed to be doing it and then doing the best you possibly can. Next slide. Listen, I used to have a, a, a concept in leadership that there were yes-centric people and no-centric people. <laughs> and I don't know about you, but uh, if, you, if you've ever thought of an idea for the area or the wing or whatever organization you're in, most, of, most times you probably put an awful lot of, of uh, emphasis into that or effort into in formulating whatever your idea or thought process is. And then comes this time where you approach the boss. And you have this idea and you're really kind of excited about it and you promote it. The worst thing any boss can do, any leader can do, is, is dismiss that, that, uh, uh, that idea or that input uh, and basically, you know, uh, pushing it aside. So you want to be receptive and you want to listen and, and give it up. Because yes-centric people will do everything they can to take that idea and either incorporate it into whatever they're doing and, or you know, give a reason why it, it, you know it's not possible. So feedback after someone gives you an input is is very important. Uh, one of the things that uh, some folks told me after I you know stepped down as a wing commander is they said one of the things they liked about me, which you know you always glad to hear something like that, was that I used to walk around and just talk to people. And I, you know, I wander down, you know, to maintenance or over to personnel, and just chat with people and listen to what they had to say and, and interact with them. And uh, so that's a, a really good a a thing that you can do, or a technique that you can use to, you know, basically get a broader insight of what leadership is in your organization. And always follow up with uh, feedback. If somebody gives you a good idea, uh, don't just, you know, say thank you and go away. You know, get back with them at some point and say, you know, that was pretty good and here's what we're going to do or can't do about it. Next slide. Okay, leadership is all about helping people succeed. I'll never forget, this wasn't my idea. I remember we went, I went to a promotion ceremony uh, for an officer down at, uh, at headquarters. And uh, General Smith was the adjutant general at the time, John Smith. And he made some comments, and the one comment that just struck me, because quite honestly, I had not heard it before, is the most important thing that a leader can do is help those under him or his followers succeed. Make their jobs easier, and give them the resources they need to get their job done, and, and give them your personal support to do that. Because when everyone, when everyone succeeds, the organization succeeds, and the individuals also uh, succeed. Next slide. Be decisive. Another, um, I think, lesson I learned, uh, and I don't want to be smirch anybody, but uh, I used to go to some, you know, staff meetings, and we would sit in these staff meetings for like two hours. And when we came out of this staff meeting after an extended period of time, most of us used to look at each other and say, "What are we doing? What was decided?" So I think it's important for leaders to be decisive. Now, being decisive doesn't mean you just you know get up in front of everybody and say, "Here's what we're doing." You know, get feedback, get inputs, discuss issues, but then don't be afraid to take all those inputs and formulate a, a solution or two, and then get consensus that that's the way to go. But the leader needs to say, "This is what we're the where we're going to go," and. As Colin Powell said, most almost all decisions uh, need to be, you know, uh, adjusted at some point or another. And uh, so, again, just be ready to make a decision and also to uh, adjust it as necessary. Number six: show appreciation. Uh, I have always thought that showing appreciation was one of the most important things I could do. 
sending somebody a, a you know a personal note. I remember one time I sent so many little notes around. Somebody made it in a big string, like a, like a toilet paper kind of thing. And uh, but it was just I would write notes to people, and then of course we started to get emails and, and stuff. And you could do that. But saying thanks is really really important. Give credit where credit is due. If you're a leader and, and you uh, make the huge mistake of taking credit for what people under you did, it, that, that's the kiss of death. And you just you just can't do it. You make more, uh, the, the best uh, progress by giving credit and saying thanks in, in any uh, number of ways. All right, next. Okay, to summarize, I know this is short, but I want to chat with you folks about what you think on leadership. Um, leadership isn't about you. You know, it's not like you're the big hero because you've been selected to lead a certain group, whether as a, you know, a squadron or, <coughs> or group or whatever it might be. It's about what you can do as a leader to keep that organization and those people moving forward. So don't ever think it's about you. It's about how you inspire followers to achieve a better future for the organization and themselves. All right. Now this was not a lot of stuff, and I'm getting, I, like I told you from the beginning, uh, this stuff is to me most just totally common sense. Treating people the way you would like to treat, uh, would like to be treated, the golden rule, and uh, and just working with people to achieve, you know, a success for everyone. So I'd like to open it up now to uh, questions, to inputs, and um, who's going to be the first? Come on now, don't be afraid. Yes, sir, I'll be first here. Right here, sir. Oh, this is Lieutenant Rear. Oh, it's on the phone. Well, I'll tell you what, in, in, a, in a previous life, I was a, uh, back, actually a commander of a comm squadron. It was a uh, air traffic control communications squadron. And the, the lesson that I learned very quickly as a young officer, because I was, I think it was just a captain at the time, um, is listen to your, your um, senior enlisted folks. Um, the chiefs and the, and the other folks like that are a wealth of knowledge. And uh, I guarantee you, as a young lieutenant, you don't know better than those guys, but you should seek their counsel and their trust. And, uh, and I think working with them, uh, you can really achieve stuff. But uh, uh, it really isn't the best thing to do, to think that you know, you're the officer and you know, you're in it, now you're in charge, and that's right. But you need to you know, take advantage of uh, the experience and, and wealth of knowledge that the senior enlisted folks and other officers in that organization have. Thank you, sir. Yep. Sir, I have one as well. Um, my question is based on in these interesting times that we're living in right now during COVID and uh, all of the politica, uh, political and economic um, problems that we're seeing as recently and uh, all this up for, um, do you have any creative ideas um, as to how we can energize support our team to achieve. Um, I know that you have served uh, our wing and and helped us get through hard times such as BRAC, uh, our base being shut down and things of that sort. Was there any um, was there any specific tricks or approaches that was um, specifically very helpful for you, sir? Well, that's a tough one. I think uh, one of the things is you, you, you have to be positive. Um, you know, you have to, you know, if, if you're kind of down and out and, and uh, about something, that's going to, you know, spread throughout the, uh, the, the group or the wing or whatever. So you need to be positive. Uh, the other thing that I think uh, from a commander's perspective, and uh, I, thankfully I learned this early on in my career, is you need to in, be involved in the politics of it all. Um, and I'm talking more of the, you know, the senior leadership in the wing. Um, you know, the, uh, there's a lot that can be done legislatively, 
Uh, one of the uh, one of the things that I did for seven years was I was the director of the uh, legislative affairs at the National Guard Association. And, and ha let's see, how many of you are officers? Raise your hand. Okay, that's an officers uh, association. But uh, we handle both Army and, and Air issues for the National Guard because the National Guard can't, um, uh, you know. Uh, other than going to see your own representatives, you can't uh, lobby. So we lobbied for all that. But there's a lot you can do. Now, one of the, one of the things we did was um, in 2005, uh, they were going to uh, uh, brack this unit. They were going to close it. And one of the options that we had to, at the association was what we call right to Congress. And we would have uh, legislative alerts and put those out, and uh, uh, people would we, we would form a, a, a letter uh, uh, outlining the issue and what we wanted our members of Congress, uh, House and Senate to do. And individual members would go to the website and they'd put in their zip code and then they would be connected to their two senators and their um, you know, House member. And uh, we got more than 30,000 letters sent to uh, the members of Congress, which ev inevitably ended up saving this unit. So the reason I say that is there's positive things you can do. You know, and politically, you, you need to be connected to the political aspects of, uh, of the military uh, because, you know, the, um, there's a lot of people trying to get the resources out of the Congress and, you know, you got to stand up to get what, what you hope you deserve. How many of you are already leaders. Come on. Okay, we got one doubter down here. <laughs> All right, well, good for you. That's good for you. Um, we have a, a question here. So please go ahead, virtual. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, this is a uh, tech starting to today. Um, I'm the uh, NCIC for the uh, cybersecurity shop. But, uh, my question to you uh, would be, what is a uh, Good question. I, don't know. I think uh, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that. I think uh, you know my my in, um, method in the military was always just do the very best job you could do, and uh, and if you're doing the best job you can do, and you, you follow that, and then one of those uh, bullets that I briefed on, uh, I, I believe the right things will happen. Um, and, you know, and if they're meant to happen, they happen, and, and you know, maybe it doesn't happen for you, but at least you've done your best, and, uh, uh, you know, and come what may. Uh, the other thing that's unfortunate sometimes is, you know, life isn't always fair. You know, you can be in a position where you've done all the right things, and maybe it didn't work out, and so maybe you have to look to a different way. Um, and the only other thing I could say there is I think Deepak Chopra has said this is uh, you know everybody needs goals and, and he called that I think the uh, uh, um, uh, theory of detachment and you sh should always have goals and, and proceed for those goals but don't be so focused on that goal that you might miss some other opportunity that might fit you even better so uh, you know just do your best and uh, you know hang in there. really hard to connect to people right now, especially with everything that's going on in the world. So I'm, I'm just wondering on your thoughts for creatively how to get, I guess, more involvement out of people since we're remote a lot of times. We don't have that interaction. I know you mentioned earlier that you like to uh, just walk around and talk to people, but we can't do that right now. So what are your thoughts on how to combat that? Well, yeah, it is tough right now. Um, I think one thing you can do is get people involved in, in projects, and, and, and uh, you know, get them involved in doing something that you know will be of some benefit to the organization. 
uh, or themselves. And you know, it may take some creativity to come up with what exactly what those things are. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll give you one example um, that got me into this legislative thing was uh, back in the old days here at the unit that Colonel Arnold, uh, any of you know who Colonel Arnold is? All right, we got one. Um, but Colonel Arnold was the wing commander um, back, you know, when I was a, a younger officer. And uh, and we had a beer call one time, you know, like, a, you know, all the officers got together and then the wing commander kind of, you know, read us a riot act or talked to us or whatever. And, and he told us, he said, you know, you guys need to, you gals need to get involved in the association. And my interpretation of the association before that was that, you know, it was just a special group of people that liked to party and didn't get anything done. But uh, so anyway, I said, what the heck, you know, I'll, I'll volunteer. And so I volunteered, and, and the next week I was vice president of the association. It, it, <laughs> anyway, uh, but what I learned then is what I was trying to say a little earlier, is uh, the political aspects, the legislative aspects of the Guard are very important. And I think it's, it's good to get involved in that. So being involved in the association is a positive uh, uh, way to get people, you know, uh, you know, maybe energized, if you want to put it that way. Some of these questions are tough. <laughs> well, let's get a question from this side. Why don't we go around, where do you guys work? Where, let's, Uh, for which, for what? Can't go wrong with that that direction. How are you? The only thing I got with Key Bank is, you know, most of you probably have this, but you know, you have savings in your credit card and all that, and so I go in there and I'm always manipulating these things. And you, when you take money from one one account and put it in another, it takes it out really fast. It takes a while to get in the other one. I don't know how that point that is. Anyway, how about yourself? Yes, sir. I work right here at communications full time. I'm a training manager, department manager. All right. I've been here for about 10 years, and but you were my first commander. I joined um, in 2000. There's people that actually remember you. you know, the thing in the military, at least in the Guard, is I think 10% of the people you know, uh, transfer out or retire or whatever every year. So when you're gone about 10 years, there's very precious few people that you know, were around when you were. So. All right. Hello, sir. Uh, I'm a full-time nursing student, so I do that most of the time. But I have a part-time job in programming, and I work here in the cybersecurity vault. All right. Uh, I work out here full time as a communications local point. I'm sorry, speak a little louder. I work out here full time as part of the complex the communications local point. All right. Uh, we're on the uh, Okay. In music, I, I had a, an instant connection with this young man uh, because uh, I know his mother and father. And uh, his, his father was quite the character, probably still is. But uh, anyway. Currently going to school for cybersecurity and working uh, in stock fire systems. All right. Voice over IP support. Phones. Tell really? Me. Yes, sir. You know, I have a son in law uh, who married my oldest daughter who is into DOIP phones, and he started a company. Uh, doing that and did very well with himself and then it was sold and now he's starting another one with the same uh, new and uh, better things. So that BOIP thing is, is a good field to be in. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm a Linux system administrator. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Sorry, uh, Linux systems administrator, so I uh, manage servers that are in space. Yeah. 
So we're, this is a calm bunch here. <laughs> well, good. Um, I'd like to say some of my best friends are in a calm. I you know a, a, a chief, he was chief, Chief Farris, right? I still talk to him all the time. He flies airplanes and stuff. And uh, then uh, Colonel Howard, anybody remember Colonel Howard? All right, one of my favorite people. And in fact, I sent him a, uh, an email this morning where uh, part of members of the Friends of the Guard and uh, we, the Friends of the Guard, we, we, we uh, have, have money that we can, you know, use to support uh, deployment, you know, events and that sort of thing. But he's our treasurer. So he's going to give me a treasurer report. So, all right. And then there's Joe Harwood takes the best pictures I've ever seen of uh, this uh, this base and, and the airplanes, and we really appreciate that. I, I got a bunch of those saved on my phone and in my computer. Um, just a, a great eye for uh, what you do. So uh, greatly appreciate that. All right. Any any more questions, maybe? Yes, sir. Actually, um, in the spirit of development, um, as our leadership um, series. All enlisted and officers are required to continually develop um, all the time. So we are curious as to what things over the years you found the most fruitful. And um, you know some people like to listen to leadership books on tape, things of that sort. Is there something you did on a regimented basis to continue to educate yourself and to help develop your uh, your troops? Sir? Yeah. Um you know, I think if, if you uh, go to a library, you'll probably find that there's probably hundreds of books written on leadership. And uh, the majority of the books written on leadership are written by people who were successful in a leadership position. And then they, uh, you know, they, they would uh, write a book about what they did and that what's what worked for them. And so, you know, I've read a number of those books, probably at least, you know, a dozen or, or more of them. Uh, also, when I was in uh, War College, uh, I developed my own leadership uh, theory. I called it the leadership sum, where uh, your ability to be, you know, become a leader was in part based on a number of different uh, traits, like your intellect and your character and, and, and so forth. And, uh, you know, and, and so developing those traits could you know, ensure that you know you would probably be prepared for a higher level of leadership, and if not, you might get explain why you didn't. So, um, you know, all I can say is just, you know, if, 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 if you go to the library or uh, you know Barnes and Noble or whatever it is, you know, go to the leadership section and get a book and read it. And um, I like the ones that are like 300 pages or less. I don't like these big thick ones. So but anyway, you, you never know what you're going to learn. Um, we had one other question, uh, a text uh, question as well, sir. Um, the, the next question was, was there some specific um, element in your training that you found um, incredibly powerful and um, something they should uh, definitely invest in? Uh, a lot of times we, um, we don't have enough seats in the guard to do everything to residents, so we're forced to uh, do correspondence and books and that sort. But was there one particular thing that stood out and you found that was very powerful that came from the Air Force that they should definitely focus on and not miss? Well, one thing I'll say about the professional military education, I know sometimes they change the names of this stuff, is, is my personal thoughts on that was I always wanted to have all that stuff done before I had time and grade. Um, you know, if, if uh, you know, if you're going to be up for whatever the rank is and you have to have a certain course in, have it done well in advance. Uh, one of the things I felt bad about was uh, when I was a squadron commander over in you know, the airlift squadron, uh, there was a guy that, uh, actually I was a group commander, and um, there was a guy that I wanted to promote because he was a great guy. I mean, he was as sharp a cookie as it came along and, and had all the right uh, attributes, but uh, he didn't complete his PME. And as a result, I couldn't promote him. And I always felt bad about that because he, he deserved to be promoted, but I guess in his, his um, you know, civilian jobs and stuff, he didn't feel like he had, had the right time. Uh, the other thing I will tell you is, um, uh, you, you know, this is an officer school, but uh, uh, to get promoted to the rank of colonel, you have to have a war college. And, uh, and so I, I had applied to War College 
and the first time I applied to War College, uh, I was told I was the first alternate in the Guard. I think they select 14 people a year, and I was like number 15. And they told me, they said, you know, um, you, you know somebody will drop out and you'll get to, get, get to go. Of course, that didn't happen, so I immediately signed up to do it in, in uh, correspondence. And the uh, commander at the time, which I know you won't uh, remember, uh, Colonel Red Lewis, um, he said, Rich, no, you're going in, in, uh, in, in uh, residence. And uh, I applied the next year and ended up going in residence. But uh, getting your PME done is really, really important, I think, or any other schools that may be appropriate to your career field. Yeah, we have a tough one now, sir. So we'll there they're all tough. <laughs> Uh, you've had quite the impressive 35 year um, career and you have served here and many places um, across the nation. Um, we often hear that there's something special about Mansfield and you're always back here supporting us. So I'd like to, to hear your perspective on that and why you've been, uh, what's led you to be such an avid supporter of us. Well, I got to tell you, um, I know I'm prejudiced, and probably all of you are prejudiced in a certain way about this unit. But I have always thought that this unit is, is uh, you know, one of the best in the country. And why is it the best in the country? I think it's the best in the country because of the culture of this unit, which was started right from the beginning when, when Colonel Bill Ash and, and people in Mansfield stood up, you know, to take the oath and join this. And, you know, I, I think it was Alan Tappan. Uh, who, uh, you know, worked, you know, the Congress in order to get this unit here, and there was a question whether they could get enough people, and they got enough people on day one. But from day one of this organization, this unit, you know, uh, be becoming a, you know, a, a, a an Air National Guard a wing, the thing that I think is 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 contributed to success is doing things the right way. The culture of doing it right, not taking, you know, cutting corners or, you know, getting away with whatever you can, but people actually did the best they possibly could. Like that first bullet that I put up there. And that's carried this unit forever. I mean, I was one of the recipients of the benefit of that. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, this unit was cooking along doing a fabulous job, and it wasn't anything I did, it was what had been, you know, happening throughout all the years. So as, as a commander, my job was to just keep that going and uh, you, know, you know, try to go higher, but you know, uh, understand the value of doing things the right way. And, uh, and, and Mansfield has always done that. Do you have any other questions? All right. The only thing I want to leave you with is the bullets that I put up here may seem simple, but trust me, they're, they're valuable and important. And don't underestimate, you know, how doing your best every day and how listening to people um, and how helping others succeed, uh, you know, works because it does work. And you know, there's a lot of other leadership things you can get from other books or other people, but I think these will do you well. Thank you. Before we go, sir, we wanted to um, take an opportunity to thank, uh, thank you for all of this. Um, you, um, you're one of the reasons that we have the base and it's beautiful and as resilient as it is, and we wanted to take the opportunity to thank you. Um, we have a small token of our appreciation, and this is actually our newly minted communications flight coin. Uh, it looks uh, much different than what you're uh, um, used to, on, I'm sure. But we wanted to uh, give that we to you. We have to do this the right way. Absolutely. You do that for something. What's in my hand? And then, okay. There we go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. He's really right. These coins have come a long way. I remember, this is a little story here. The first coins, when they were just getting going, and, and I bought some coins for the unit from Korea. They were the drabbest things you've ever seen, but these are beautiful. Thank you. We, uh, we are going to uh, continue our leadership series, and um, we always love to have you come back in the future. So thank you very much. Sir.